It's a small town and everybody knows everybody. We're a very close-knit group of people, very protective of each other. But people are not who you may think they are, and monsters are real. Tara was a beautiful woman. She was one of the nicest, kindest people that I've ever known. She went to Miss Georgia, which was her dream. I'm an 11th grade history teacher at Irwin County High School, and I also have a cheerleading squad. The 22nd of October, 2005, Tara was here that night at a pageant. The 30-year-old woman was last seen heading home from a late-night dinner with friends. At her house, decorated for Halloween, police found her cell phone inside and her car in the driveway. Evidence technicians found no signs of a struggle or forced entry, but did notice her purse and keys were gone. Not good. We don't have any leads. This is so out of character for her to not go to work, to not call in, and to not have gotten in touch with somebody. The weeks and the months and the years pass, and you still don't know. It almost became an urban legend about Tara Grinstead. And then, bam. An Atlanta filmmaker who produces an internet podcast is credited with keeping interest in the story alive. I became obsessed with Tara's story. 11 years, no suspects, no arrests. My investigation rocked this small town and turned it upside down. Within a few months, the podcast had over 100 million downloads. There were dark secrets in the small town, and people started talking. Here's the truth. They disposed of the body. Do you know how? Burning. My team and I helped crack this case wide open. On February 23rd, 2017, 12 years after Tara Grinstead had vanished, a tipster went to law enforcement with information that led to an arrest. Authorities say that Ryan Alexander Duke broke into her home in October of 2005, robbed and killed the teacher with his bare hands, and then hid the body. Duke was a student at her school. Our wounds are deep, and our hearts are broken. But I think the podcast maybe helped create an environment for the truth to come out. A week later, on March 3rd, 2017, another one of Tara's former students is arrested. When I heard the name, I was flabbergasted. 32-year-old Bo Dukes, no relation to Ryan Duke, is charged with conspiracy to help Ryan Duke dispose of Tara Grinstead's body by burning it in a pecan orchard. Bo Dukes claims that his friend Ryan Duke committed the actual murder. Bo Dukes pleads not guilty and is currently out on bail. Ryan Duke confesses to the crime, but also pleads not guilty. He is currently in Irwin County Jail awaiting trial. But which one is telling the truth? According to law enforcement, Tara's body has never been found. Now, our investigation is going deeper. The prepaid call from the Irwin County Jail. Who are these two suspects? And why did it take the GBI 12 years to make an arrest? I can say that this gentleman never came up on our radar through the investigation. Is it possible that Ryan Duke isn't guilty of murder? Could Bo Dukes be more involved than he's admitting? Could Tara have had relationships with Ryan or Bo? outside of school? My team and I are heading back to Osceola, Georgia to get answers and find out why Tara Grinstead up and vanished. <laughs> On Saturday, October 22nd, 2005, Osceola, Georgia was preparing for the Sweet Potato Festival beauty pageant. 30-year-old Tara Grinstead, a former beauty queen herself, was mentoring a house full of teenage girls, getting ready for the event. At 5 p.m., Tara leaves her house and heads to the Fitzgerald Theater, where she watches the pageant. At 7 p.m., Tara leaves the theater and stops at a friend's house. At 8 p.m., Tara arrives at a barbecue. At 11 p.m., Tara leaves the barbecue and says she's going home. It's the last place anyone sees Tara Grinstead alive. Ryan Duke is charged with the murder of Tara Grinstead, and Bo Dukes is charged as an accomplice to the murder. But why would Ryan Duke, a former student of Tara's, want to kill her? And what motivation does Bo Dukes have to help Ryan hide the body? My team and I are not convinced that Ryan Duke committed the actual murder. We also think that Bo Dukes 
may have been more involved than he's admitting. Osili is a small town, with a population of only 3,000. How could these two former students keep this dark secret for over a decade without anyone else knowing about it? To get answers, we have to go back to the beginning and speak to people who knew Tara. Meredith is going to speak with Tara's friend and colleague, Wendy McFarland, while I'm going to meet with Tara's best friend, Maria Harbour Woods. I have spoken to Maria in the past, but not since the arrest. This is when she was in first grade. That's cute. You can definitely tell it's her. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's actually a little picture of her when she was little. <laughs> How old is she here? 16. 16, mm -hmm. wow. We were in high school. Yeah. She was just... Tara was very loving, very friendly, just a happy soul. She'd always had just a positive attitude and loving heart. She was just a good person. How would you describe your relationship with Tara? Oh, we were best friends. We knew everything about each other. Even the stuff that we didn't want everybody knowing. We had so many great years, so many great memories, nothing that I'll ever forget. How was Tara with her students? She loved teaching. She loved the relationship with the kids. She wanted to see them not only do well in school, but in life. I'm an 11th grade history teacher at Irwin County High School, and I also have a cheerleading squad of junior varsity cheerleaders, 9th and 10th graders. Uh, I just completed my first year teaching, and I, I loved every bit of it. You can see she always had that hair done, jewelry just right. Wow. She's just gorgeous. This was her first year coaching a cheerleading squad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, she reached out and was able to bring all those kids into the group and make them feel special. And this was her last school picture that she took. So. Tara was a force. She was the consummate teacher. She loved teaching. She just embraced the kids and did everything that she could to relate to them and to help them become better students and better people. She was just fantastic. The thing that you need to know most about Tara, because people refer to her as the beauty queen, Tara could care less about the crowns and the titles. Tara got into doing beauty pageants for one reason, to pay for her education. Whatever she needed to do to get her college degree and to teach one day, she knew she was going to do it. And pageants helped her, not only financially, it helped her self-esteem. It made her feel better about herself. It really was good for her. She won one. Oh, yeah, she won many. She went to Miss Georgia, which was her all-time dream. That was all she needed in life right there. My platform promotes recycling, preserve the future of recycle the past. I am Tara Grinstead. Tara really struggled growing up. You know, she lived with a single mother and she did not have a lot. The things that she had, she really had to work for. And she had already started working on her masters and working toward her doctorate. When Tara disappeared, what was your first inclination? I knew that she had not been home all day on Sunday. And I talked to her mom. She said, no, I hadn't seen her. So about 2.30 or 3, I started thinking, where is she? By the time it got dark, we just kind of panicked. On Monday, October 24th, 2005, Tara didn't show up for work. She had not come in her classroom. The lights were off. I immediately knew something was wrong. If she yeah. was leaving her students there, there's something bad probably yeah. happened to her. Something bad, yeah. She was not able to get there and had no way of calling. So automatically I'm thinking about where she could be, who can I get in touch with. That Monday morning, you eventually arrived at Tara's house. What did you see when you went inside her, her house? Her car was there. Her house looked normal. Her bedroom, you could tell she'd been in the bed. You could tell where the girls had been with the jewelry and the clothes around the, her room. Like the telephone was on the floor in the bathroom, which I thought was odd. I saw her alarm clock was blinking and it was underneath her bed. 
and you could see that the lamp was broken. Was that weird to you? Had you yes. seen that before? Oh, or, no. Would Tara normally leave without her cell phone? No, I thought. Maybe she left with somebody and didn't want somebody else calling her while she was with somebody else. The first night, Osceola came together and we did a search. And I remember thinking, oh my God, what if they're right here in this group of people? Like The killer. Yeah, the killer or the person who kidnapped her. I just couldn't help but think, what if he's right here with us? And I knew chances were that there was somebody in that crowd that knew something. Maybe that was a mistake early in the investigation. What do you make of the arrest of Ryan Duke? A big question mark. If you're confessing to a murderer, there's only one version of what happened. But did he do it? I don't believe that Ryan participated in this crime alone. How do they know which one's the lie and which one's the truth? We don't know the truth yet. We need to know it all. When Tara Grinstead disappeared on October 22, 2005, it sent shockwaves across the country and quickly became headline news. Tara Grinstead disappeared. The disappearance of 30-year-old Tara Grinstead. What happened to Tara? When local law enforcement starts investigating, they find Tara's car in the driveway, a business card in the front door belonging to police officer Heath Dykes, Tara's dog Dolly Madison in the backyard, in a latex glove on her front lawn. But who would want to hurt Tara Grinstead? Before the arrest of Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes, law enforcement had a long list of potential suspects. According to the GBI, Tara's case was complicated because she was involved in several romantic relationships at the time she disappeared. Why would Heath Dykes, the married police officer from Perry, Georgia, leave his business card in Tara's door the night she vanished? What did you know about Heath Dykes? Heath was a family friend that we've known forever. He was just a really good friend of Tara. Did you ever suspect Heath of anything? No, I did not. Not at all. In 2005, Tara was allegedly having an affair with Heath Dykes, but Tara was also in a long-term relationship with Marcus Harper, a former Osceola police officer, an army ranger, who was often on tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. The couple broke up several weeks before Tara went missing. In the early stages of the investigation, her ex-boyfriend, Marcus Harper, was basically a primary suspect in this case. What do you remember about Marcus? Marcus came home from the military kind of earlier than we expected, and they had a little falling out a couple of weeks before she went missing. It was one of those things where I guess in the back of my head, I knew that he could have been a possibility, but there were so many possibilities out there. I we just didn't know. All the guys in our school like Miss Tara. She is beautiful. She is somebody everybody wants to be like, so that might have something to do with them. In addition to Marcus Harper and Heath Dykes, the potential suspect list grew to include one of Tara's former students, Anthony Vickers. On March 30th, 2005, six months before Tara Grinset disappears, Vickers is arrested at Tara's home. This is very important. Um, Vickers believes that he has had a relationship with Tara. He had a big crush on her. He went to her house, started bamming on the door. A neighbor called police. I have spoken to Anthony Vickers in the past, and this is what he said. We saw each other after, uh, after that night of school. They went on there for a year or two. Okay, so this relationship you had with Tara, was it at all sexual? Oh, yeah. Okay. So when you two would hang out, where'd you guys usually go? Yeah, most of the time it was just her house. So was this a serious relationship, or was it more of like a fling or something? It was kind of a little bit of both, but it, it was so recent that I got out of school that we, you know, just kept it on the look. So what went down when the GBI reached out to you? I think they asked me if I would do like a DNA swab, would I be okay with that, the lie detector or some other thing. So you did a DNA swab? Yeah, I did all of that. What were the results of your lie detector test? Oh, they said I was good there, but they cleared me after that. When Anthony Vickers was arrested at Tara's house, he told me that she had company. Was there someone else in Tara's house that day? Oh, yeah, there was. I don't know who he was, but he told me to go through the door. There's some, some guy from Perry, some cop from Perry. 
After looking over the police report, we noticed that Heath Dykes was at Tara's house the day Anthony was arrested. Dykes was the cop from Perry, Georgia. After a thorough investigation, Marcus Harper, Heath Dykes, and Anthony Vickers are cleared by the GBI as potential suspects. But if Tara was potentially having relationships with former students, as Anthony suggests, is it possible she was having a romantic relationship with Ryan or Bo? There are some rumors that Tara was having relationships with her students. What did you think about that? She never had a relationship with a student while they were a student. If she had been involved with students after they graduated, you know, she was a young single girl. She was human. According to the GBI, there is no evidence of forced entry at Tara's home the night she vanished. And according to Tara's best friend, Maria, Tara had multiple locks on her door. Could Tara have known her killer well enough to let him inside? If Ryan or Bo showed up to Tara's house on Tara's doorstep and asked for help, would that have been you know, normal for her to offer it to them? Oh, absolutely. Um, I believe that if those two boys knocked on her door at midnight or whatever and asked for help, I believe she would have opened the door for them, for sure. From day one, Nancy Grace has been vigilant in her pursuit of the truth. Now that a trial is pending, I want to get her perspective on the prosecution. What do you think happened to Tara? You know, there's been a lot of speculation that Tara Grinstead was somehow sexually involved with her killers. I don't believe that. But another issue with Tara Grinstead that has got to be addressed before this case is taken to court is the sly clever innuendo that has been utilized to smear Tara Grinstead, suggesting she was a sleep around. Tara Grinstead was not a sleep around. She was young and single and unmarried. If a guy dated a lot of girls, no one would think anything of it. He'd be a playboy. Instead, if she's dated a lot of people, somehow that makes her bad. That's not true. It's a double standard. The state has to diffuse it before it blows up in court. It, that could happen. I know it sounds crazy, but it could happen. And you don't need that problem at trial. What you have to do is address the various men in her life. It's not that complicated. She had people she worked with that were male. She had people that she dated, broke up with this one, was dating that one. You know, many people, and I've noticed it's always a man, that suggests her radiance, her friendliness, somehow resulted in her murder. The suggestion that her friendliness caused her death is so misplaced. A killer murdered her. That's what happened. Maybe she was more trusting and friendly than a lot of people. Maybe that's why she may have even opened the door that night to someone she recognized. Yeah. Maybe she said, can I help you? What's wrong? You want, do you need to use the phone? But that in no way should be somehow the source of a suggestion. She's at fault. Yeah, the bottom line is someone took advantage of Tara. They did a lot more than take advantage of her. They murdered her, and I'm sure in a brutal way. Tara Grinstead disappeared on October 22, 2005. For 12 years, the case was cold. Then in 2017, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation arrested two of Tara's former students. I'm not convinced that Ryan Duke committed the actual murder. And I think Bo may be more involved than he's admitting. But who are Ryan and Bo? And why would they want to kill Tara? Ryan Duke met Bo Dukes at Irwin County High School where Tara Grinstead taught history. Ryan is from a low-income family and is rumored to have a long history of drug abuse. After graduating in 2002, Ryan worked odd jobs and moved in with his friend Bo Dukes. Bo Dukes has a history of breaking the law. In 2013, he was arrested for embezzling $150,000 from the U.S. Army. He was sentenced to 27 months in federal prison. In February 2017, a tipster went to the GBI and gave them information about Tara Grinstead. That person was Brooke Sheridan, Bo Duke's girlfriend. In her statement to the GBI, 
Brooke claimed that Ryan Duke murdered Tara and asked Bo to help dispose of her body. Brooke Sheridan currently refuses to interview with me on camera, but in 2017, just weeks after Bo's arrest, I spoke to Brooke on the podcast. Why did he do it now? Why did he come forward now? Because I made him confess. How did you make him confess? I said, you need to come clean about all of this. You can't put this on my conscience. And he broke down and he started crying. And he said, I know, I know. Bo told me that the Sunday after she had gone missing, Bo had been at home asleep. They'd had to get together at their house. How many people were there? Maybe about seven or eight. I know that it was Ryan, Bo, Ryan's brother, and then some other people that were there. Ryan comes to Bo and wakes him up and says, I killed Jerk Grinstead. And he's like, what? Then Monday, when she goes missing, that's when Bo's like, holy crap, what happened? The following Wednesday, Ryan says, hey man, you know, come with me, they go take a ride. And that is where Ryan pulled up onto Tara's body with Bo in the truck, and it was on the orchard that his family owned. Did Ryan use Bo's truck to take her body to the pecan orchard? Yes, yes. They moved her, and they disposed of the body. Do you know how? Bernie. So why didn't Bo just go to the cops back then? Ryan basically said, you know, it's your truck, it's your family's land, what are you going to do? Brooke told this story to the GBI, which led to Ryan's arrest. But to our knowledge, there's no evidence to back this up. It seems like it's only hearsay. Bo was originally arrested for concealing and disposing of a body. He was granted immunity for the information, but it seems that deal was taken off the table in September 2017, when the grand jury filed four new charges against Bo, two for making false statements to the GBI, one for hindering apprehension of a criminal, and one count of concealing the death of Tara Grinstead. According to Bo Dukes, Ryan killed Tara and asked for Bo's help in getting rid of her body. But how are we supposed to believe this story? Bo is a convicted felon who lied to the GBI is it possible that Bo Dukes pinned Tara's murder on his friend Ryan Duke to protect himself from going to jail? So when the arrests happened, was that a shock to you? Absolutely. And I literally just broke down in tears. It was surreal. Ryan was a student here. I did not teach him, but I did know him. And I've been friends with his family my whole life. What I remember of him in school days was that he was a nice, very cute, very respectable young man. He was a great kid. When I heard the name, I was flabbergasted. The other suspect, Bo, is my cousin. There just are no words that can describe that feeling. It was disappointment, disbelief, betrayal. We were the ones who made the flyers. We were the ones that first night passing out flyers, jumping in dumpsters. And the whole time, our cousin knew exactly where she was. That is what hurts, I think, the most. What do you know about Bo's character? You know, Bo, he was always the kid who went to the beat of a different drum. Bo was not always known to be truthful. Bo was not the perfect kid, but there was, had never been any indication that any of the things that he did would have led to this. Certainly nothing of this magnitude. Bo Dukes comes from a powerful family. His grandfather, Newt Hudson, was a Georgia state representative for 20 years. And the family owns Hudson Pecans, a billion dollar business. So how do you feel now that you know the pecan orchard is part of the puzzle? You know, for my family, that has always been 
sacred ground. That's what they call it. Bo's grandfather, he was a pillar of our community. He was in the state legislature. He's the one who helped get the funding for this school. He just did so many positive things for our community. We have always been upstanding. And to know that somebody is now negatively reflecting on the family, it has been very difficult. Do you think Bo is guilty? Who wants to ever believe that your family is capable of either A, committing murder, or B, helping to destroy a body and cover that up. Nobody wants to believe that's possible. If you could send a message to Bo, your cousin, right now, what would it be? Tell the truth. You know, that's, that's my message. Just tell the truth. For over a decade, the latex glove has been a mysterious key piece of evidence. The GBI confirmed that DNA belonging to Tara, an unidentified male, was found on the glove. On October 22nd, 2005, the night Tara disappeared, she went to the Fitzgerald Theater to watch a beauty pageant. At the time, Ryan and Bo were roommates, living less than a mile from the theater. Clark Jones is the manager of the Fitzgerald Theater and an acquaintance of Tara's. And he has his own theory about the latex glove. The night Tara went missing, she was in this same theater. Yes. It's been nearly 13 years ago now. The night Tara was here, maybe even somebody could have been stalking her. You, you don't know. In this theater? That individual could have been in this theater. Who knows? Do you know where Tara went that night after the pageant? This was one of the last public places Tara was. She was here, and then I understand she attended a barbecue. After that event was over, uh, that's when she just seemed to disappear and was gone. What do you make of the arrest of Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes? A big question mark. Why has it taken so long since those arrests, and why hasn't something been done? Why hasn't all this come together and an end to this situation? The individual that has come forward and admitted to the situation and who is now incarcerated, he is a distant relative of mine. Ryan Duke? Yes. Wow. And we aren't extremely close, but he is in my family. So Ryan Duke is your cousin? A distant cousin, yes. What do you know about Ryan? That boy was brought up in a wonderful home, and I love the family. And that's a very giving, caring family. What are your thoughts on the glove in Tara's yard? It has been shared with me by more than one person that Tara was known, and she had a dog, as you know. Everybody knows about the dog that she loved so much that her neighbor next door took in after she disappeared. Tara would go out, I was told, in the yard from time to time and pick up uh, dog poop, and she would wear those disposable gloves. So you're saying maybe it's not even evidence? Yeah, maybe. Although Clark's theory is interesting, it's just not that simple. If the prosecution finds DNA evidence linking Ryan or Bode to the latex glove, it could play a key role in the outcome of this trial. In Ryan Duke's indictment, it states that Ryan entered Tara's house with the intent to burglarize the home. Brooke Sheridan claims that on October 22, 2005, the night Tara Grinstead vanished, Ryan Duke was at a party with Bo Dukes. Why would Ryan leave the party, take Bo's truck, and drive five miles to Tara's house? If it was a random burglary, as the GBI suggests, why did Ryan pick Tara's house? Tara was a teacher with a modest income. There were no valuables lying around. And if it's true that Ryan was looking to steal something, why'd he leave behind cash and Tara's cell phone? What evidence does the GBI have that proves Ryan Duke entered Tara's house and committed a burglary? Maurice Godwin has been investigating Tara's case since 2006. So are you buying the whole burglary theory? The burglary uh, theory, no. Yeah, if Ryan Duke was really trying to rob Tara of something, what's he trying to steal? She's a school teacher. She probably doesn't have that much money, single. What could he possibly get from her home? Yeah, he, he wasn't there to rob her. And on top of that, what was missing? Uh, nothing.
the police are saying that Ryan Duke broke into Tara's house that night and killed her. If that's true, in your opinion, how did he get in there? Well, there's been rumors that he used a credit card. And it's unlikely because he would have to bend the credit card so much to even get to the doorknob slide thing that it would, it would have broken the credit card. If you're out there with a credit card fiddling and making all this noise, wouldn't the dog start barking and wouldn't Tara wake up and see all this? I don't think that happened. So you're saying it's more likely that Tara either knew the person at the door and let them in, or maybe she left the door unlocked? That's right. Well, it's more likely that somebody would use a ruse such as my car is broke down and she knows the person, or she didn't originally lock the doorknob when she went in and she went on to the back of the room and the person snuck up and went into the house. They were watching her. You have to be watching somebody see to do that. The lamp by her bed, what was the condition of it? Where you screwed the light bulb in was completely broken in two. By force? Or... By force. I think somebody just reached up and, and, and broke it like this. You would think if somebody killed Tara inside of her home and transported her body anywhere else, it'd be kind of hard to do. Yeah, they would have to part right here and just run out real quick, but I think it would take more than a one person over the shoulder because she weighed about 104, 103 pounds or something like that, but still dead weight to throw it over your shoulder and stuff and run out here's a risk. I think two people were involved, and I think two people were involved in that house. In a murder? In a murder, yes. Yes, I think two people were involved in the murder. So if Ryan Duke killed Tara, what on earth was his motive? Sex. I don't believe that Ryan participated in this crime alone. I believe that Bo is equally as guilty as Ryan. I think Bo was in that house just as much as Ryan was. The likelihood of Ryan Duke leaving a party in the middle of the night to drive to Tara's house with the intention to rob her sounds far-fetched. According to the GBI, there was no forced entry or any evidence that proves there was an actual burglary at Tara's house. Why is the GBI charging Ryan Duke with burglary? Ashley Merchant is a well-known criminal defense attorney in Georgia. She's also familiar with the case. I want to get her legal perspective on the arrest. To your knowledge, is there any DNA evidence that links Ryan Duke or Bo Dukes to Tara's murder? Nothing. No physical evidence whatsoever. No DNA, nothing like that. So what we've got is a case based on people's statements. Police are essentially saying that Ryan Duke burglarized Tara's house. Right. She's a teacher. I'm just assuming there's probably not too many valuables in her house. Does this make any sense to you? It doesn't make common sense, but knowing how the law is in Georgia, it makes legal sense. And the reason that they did that is because they wanted to charge felony murder. All they have to prove is that he intended to enter the house unlawfully and that a death resulted. That's it. So it's easier. It's a lot easier. And it's the same punishment. Burglary is actually fairly easy to prove in Georgia because it's just an unlawful entry with the intent to commit a th something inside, some type of felony. It doesn't even have to be theft. If the burglary is not true, then what else is not true is, is like where my mind goes instantly. Oh, exactly. And that's what a good defense attorney would, would poke holes, would say, you know, the state is telling you that this burglary happened. It doesn't make any sense. You know, the burglary didn't happen. So what else are they telling you that's not true? I think it's possible that Ryan Duke was coerced into confessing something? Definitely. And I think that most people don't understand the dynamics of confessions or police interrogations. And so they think that it's very unlikely that someone would give bad information to the police. And they think that they must be lying. You want to tell them because you want the interview to be over. And they want to make that officer happy. And they tell them what they think they want him to hear. And it's not necessarily the truth. Is Ryan Duke guilty? I don't think he's guilty. So as the defense, I would get up there and I would argue that Bo Dukes orchestrated this whole plan, that they had been researching this case, investigating this case for almost a decade and had not found one piece of evidence to link to Ryan. Then Bo Dukes comes in the picture and boom, all of a sudden, the whole case is Ryan. It's all Ryan. Bo Dukes doesn't have that much information. And if he did, he was definitely involved, more than he's saying he's involved. So I think you've got a liar who is trying to manipulate the situation, has lied to the police, indicted for lying to the police. Nobody independent brought Ryan's name into this. 
Bo Dukes is the only one that brought a statement to it. I think he had a lot bigger role than anybody thinks. Why is he coming forward 12 years later? Because he wants to get out in front of it and get a deal. Because the first person to talk always gets the deal. He was smart enough to know that if he went forward and gave the police something that they wanted, that he would be in a better position to get a deal. And it also deflects off of him. It deflects the guilt off of him. It's classic. Don't look at me anymore, look over there. And that's what he's doing. It's a red herring is what it is. I mean, is it about finding the truth, what really happened, or is it about just getting a murder conviction? Well, it should be about finding the truth, and that should be the way that the system is, but that's just not how it's set up. It just doesn't work that way, because once they get a suspect, they put up the blinders, and they don't look at any other possibilities. It's clear to me that Ryan and Bo are both involved in Tara's murder, but what role did each of them play? Did Ryan Duke kill Tara, or Bo Dukes? And what's the motive? Is the GBI targeting Ryan Duke as a suspect based only on statements from Bo Dukes and Brooke Sheridan? I'm on my way to meet Robert Preston, the editor of the Douglas Daily News. He covered Tara's case from the beginning. I want to ask Robert how it's possible that Ryan and Bo were able to fly under the radar in this small town for over a decade. The GBI said that Ryan Duke's name had never come up on their radar at all. If it didn't, then there was a mistake or an oversight somewhere early in the investigation. A few weeks after she went missing, someone at a party overheard, I believe it was Ryan, talking about what happened. And he had allegedly been drinking, and it was one of those kinds of parties, and he was talking about it. And someone who overheard it reported that to the authorities, and I believe this happened over in Osceola, reported to the Irwin County Sheriff's Office. What was Ryan saying? Now that I don't know. As I heard, he was describing killing Tara, describing Tara's death, and then covering it up. And the Irwin County Sheriff's Office followed up on it to the point that a deputy went to the pecan orchard and looked around, didn't find anything, and I was told they made a note in the file that this happened but they dismissed it as a drunk kid talking, trying to get some attention, didn't have anything to back it up, and that was that. Did Ryan and Bo really confess to killing Tara at a party several weeks after she disappeared? What about the theory that there was a party, Bo and Ryan were there, and they'd confessed or mentioned this in the past? Well, it's not a theory. I mean, it's a fact. There was a party. I've talked to people that were there. And yeah, they did make some reference. But here's the thing. At that time, Ryan was known to drink a lot. Bo was not always known to be truthful. So when the two of them make a statement like that, and that was pretty quickly after she went missing, nobody in that group believed a word that they said. Except for one anonymous student who went to local law enforcement two weeks after Tara disappeared, before the Georgia Bureau of Investigation became involved. The police officer who followed that tip and searched the Hudson Pecan Orchard is Nelson Polk, and I've spoken to him in the past. There was a guy that had went to another man and woman and told or his friends and told them that uh, Ryan was at a party and was drunk, and he said he did all of this. They called me and Alan Morgan, and we met with them. We went to the Pecan Orchard, we searched it, got a statement from him, and turned it over to the GBI. But the GBI says, well, it's not in the file. If it isn't not in the file, it didn't happen. We knew about this less than two months after she disappeared, but the GBI didn't do anything. If local law enforcement gave information to the GBI in 2006 that two former students disposed of Tara's body by burning it in a pecan orchard, then why did it take 12 years for the GBI to make an arrest? Philip Holloway is a criminal defense attorney with deep roots in Osceola, Georgia. Philip served on the Osceola police force. Bo is not charged with murder. We know that according to the GBI at least, as recently as the summer of 2017, he was lying to them about this case. The prosecution basically is calling their star witness, 
a liar, essentially. A felonious liar at that. Because even though the state has charged Bo Dukes with these crimes, they still need him to prosecute Ryan. Well, that's sort of the $64,000 question at this point is if they need him, he's damaged goods. He's a convicted felon, and they've accused him of lying to the GBI about this very case. To corroborate Bo's story at all, finding a body would do that. But without that, where are they at? Yes, Georgia law requires that there be corroboration. If, if all you've got is the confession of a defendant, you don't have a case. It's got to be corroborated. So you think they found her body? I think they found some at least trace evidence. I think that a beautiful life was snuffed out for no real good reason whatsoever. People are not who you may think they are. I think Tara was the victim of a monster. Monsters are real. I just keep getting the feeling that she is hiding in plain sight, that she's right under our noses somewhere. So Ryan Duke was arrested for Tara's murder. Then there's this Bo Dukes character who openly admitted to the cops that he was involved and helped dispose of Tara's body with Ryan. What do you make of Bo Dukes? I'm still trying to figure out if I hate him as much as I hate Ryan Dukes. Because if someone approached me and said, hey, I killed my old history teacher. Can you help me burn and dismember the body and bury it in a pecan orchard? According to Bo Dukes, Ryan was the mastermind of all this. Ryan's who roped in Bo to get him to help dispose of the body. But have you seen Ryan? Have you seen Bo? Bo has the criminal history, stealing money from the government. The police are saying that he's a liar. They're calling him a liar themselves in the new indictment for Bo Dukes. So is Ryan the mastermind or is, is Bo? You know, you're asking me to pick between Satan and Beelzebub. So it's kind of a hard distinction to make. And if you want somebody to help dispose of a body, who do you approach? Nuns and priests and virgins? No, you approach somebody like Bo Dukes. From what I can tell right now, it was Ryan Duke, and Bo was brought in after. But with no body, how do you get a conviction? You don't have to have a body to convict someone of murder. Evidence comes forward in many different ways. By the time this is all over, we may have a very different story. According to Bo Dukes, Ryan killed Tara, and Bo helped dispose of her body. If this is true, how were they able to keep this a secret in such a small town for over a decade? I know that Ryan and Bo are involved in Tara's murder, but did they have help covering it up? Is it possible that Bo Duke's relation to the most influential family in the county is helping him stay out of prison? Is the GBI honing in on Ryan as a suspect just because Bo Duke's pointed his finger at him? Ryan confessed to Tara's murder, but pled not guilty to the charges. The only way to find out why Ryan confessed is to speak to people close to him. Zach Gerard is one of Ryan Duke's closest friends. He's one of the few people who's been in communication with Ryan since his arrest. This is the first time Zach is speaking publicly about the case. How do you know Ryan? Ryan and I went to school together. We still kept in touch over the years, a good bit, you know, like phone calls. How would you describe Ryan? A very calm individual, non-confrontational guy, very quiet, very polite. He's an artsy kind of guy. He likes poetry. He is kind of like a hopeless romantic type. Was there a dark side to Ryan? Not really. Not that I ever know of. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, the Ryan you know, is that guy capable of murder? The Ryan Duke I know is not capable of murder, no. I do think Ryan had a hand afterwards in going along with Bo's story. I think Ryan bought it hook, line, and sinker, honestly. Why would he do that? Ryan's that type of guy. You've heard the stories about him being a loyal friend, and all that's true. 
Ryan is. He's a loyal friend. He was the type of guy that would give you the shirt off his back if he liked you and he knew that you was in need. That's a little more than loyalty, right? Well, I don't, it just depends, you know. Small towns, there ain't many people. You gotta stay pretty close to your friends, you know. So you think Ryan would knowingly take the rap for a murder that he didn't commit? I don't think he's gonna take the rap. I think that's where that not guilty comes into play. But how did they prove he's not guilty? Do you think Ryan confessed to this murder? I believe that Ryan has told several different stories in forms of confessions. To the cops? Yes. Why would he have three different versions of what happened? From what I've been told is one of them was a story that was what Bo told him happened. Then some other friends had told him what happened, and it wasn't like exactly what Bo said. What was his mental state, you think, at the time of his alleged confession? That's a good question. I've heard from a very, very reliable source that Ryan may or may not have been on drugs during his confession. And if that's the case, wouldn't it alter what his mind a little bit? Maybe that's why he told three different stories. Maybe that's how he got sick when he was in the confession room. But if you're confessing to a crime, a murder here, if you did it, there's only one version of what happened. If you did it, correct. But did he do it? Do you think Ryan did it? The actual murder? No. The disposal of her body afterwards, yeah, I think Ryan was involved with that probably. From what I've been told, Bo told Ryan what he'd done and not Ryan telling Bo what he'd done. And Ryan believes it. I think he believes some of it. I believe if Bo told him something like, if they all three was together, Bo, Ryan, Tara, maybe more, I think Ryan may have a memory of a little bit of that, of them being together. And you know, just fuzzy pieces here and there. Just to clear things up, you don't think that Ryan Duke killed Tara at all, but you do think he had a hand in disposing her body and was a part of this crime somehow? That is correct, yes I do. Under what circumstance did Ryan Duke ever meet up with Tara? I think Tara got a phone call that night at Troy Davis's house. And I think that Tara went to the White Horse to see and check up on her ex-boyfriend when she got that phone call. And from there, she may have run into the guys in the parking lot. They could have been needing a ride home. They could have been drunk. They could have probably know they could have needed a jump. And I think that's how they met her, right there. So you think Tara left the barbecue to go see if Marcus was at the White Horse Saloon? That's what they do. And then from there? Don't know. That's what I don't know. What do you make of Bo Dukes? I think he's pretty lucky to be walking around a free man. That's what I think. I think he must have some nice connections to not be charged with murder. You think he should be charged with murder? Yes, I do. You think Bo Dukes killed Tara? Yes, I do. There was five people there that night. Who were they? There was five people there that night. Who were they? First names? And there was Ron. There was Bo. There was There was There was, there was I don't think the truth will completely come out in trial. Zach Gerard, a childhood friend of Ryan Alexander Duke, dropped a bombshell on us, naming three more former students of Tara Grinstead, who he believes could be involved in a potential cover-up of Tara's murder. Christy Wheeler is the editor of the Osceola Star. She's highly respected in Osceola and well-informed. I want to find out if she's heard anything about other people being involved in Tara's murder. Over a decade, no answers, all of a sudden, two arrests. What happened? These two guys, you know, their name came out of nowhere. I had not heard of these guys before. Could there be other guys? That's been a question that's been raised. That has been a question that I've heard quite a bit of in the community. What are they saying? Involvement of other people, and that this is not where it stops. That it's not just Ryan and Bo. Right. That maybe there's other friends or someone else. It's been heard that he's a fall boy. Ryan. That's a very huge rumor on the street. A fall boy for? I don't know, but that is the rumor. If there's more out there, is what we do know the truth or not? I don't think so, because if we don't know it all, we don't know the truth yet. We need to know it all. We have to have all of it in order to have the truth. If you're leaving anything out, if you're changing anything, 
if you're switching anything up, we don't have the truth. And I want it all. In half a mile, the destination is on your left. I've been talking to Ryan Duke's mother, Karen O'Neill, throughout my investigation. But a few days ago, she went silent. I'm hoping I can get her opinion when she sees me in person. The destination is on your left. Arrived. Hey, Karen. Do you care if you talk to me about Ryan? He's getting really scared, Hank, because he doesn't feel like his lawyer is really trying to help him. He said he thinks that his lawyer wants him to take a deal. And he said, Mom, I didn't do this. I'm not taking a deal. You know, the more I learn about this, everything looks so bad. What are you learning? I learned that the DA was in a conflict of interest because, um, uh, his son is friends with Bo. Bo's got him a sweet deal. And he said, well, it's a career-making case. That's why he doesn't remove himself. Were there five people there that night, those guys? All I hear about is after. That after they what? All, after she was killed. They all were involved in destroying her body. All of them? Yeah. Where are you hearing this from? I'm only asking because I just want to know if it's I true just, or not. Well, I can't say what I've heard from. It's a very reliable source. I just want the truth out. You know what I mean? And I know you do, too. I do, too. I know you do. I do, too. Well, it's not too late to tell the whole story. Yeah, it absolutely is, but he's scared to death. But now he's realizing that his friends had turned against him, and he knew how powerful they were. He gave up. Is it true that he was on morphine during the confession? How do you know that? He told me, he said, Mama, I took one of your morphine. Why did he take it? He suffers from depression, bad. And because he was so nervous and so scared, he thought it would help calm him down. I mean, if the indictment isn't true, then this is the time to tell the well, truth. He won't say anything at all. His lawyer told him to keep his mouth shut and don't say anything, and I think that's bullshit right there. I really do. Why? Why can't he tell his side of the story? I think he should. I think he should, too. I think he should tell me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Karen, um, let's talk. All right. We'll figure it out, okay? All right, baby. Thanks All again. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Payne. You're welcome. That was shocking. Karen confirmed what Zach told me, that there were several other witnesses to Tara's murder. And how reliable can Ryan's confession be if he wrote it under the influence of morphine? Well, that was interesting. Ryan Alexander Duke is charged with the murder of Tara Grinstead. But is he actually the murderer? We have learned that Ryan was under the influence of morphine when he wrote his confession. Bo Dukes posted $16,700 in bail money and is currently working at his girlfriend's family restaurant. The rumor around Osceola is that Bo could be the real killer, while Ryan is the one who assisted in disposing of Tara's body. But the question of why or how still remains. If there were three other witnesses the night that Tara was burned in the pecan orchard, then why isn't the GBI questioning them? Bo's grandfather, Newt Hudson, is now deceased, but he was a powerful Georgia State representative for over 20 years, and his family still carries some of that influence. The other two students that Zach mentioned are the sons of yet another well-respected family in Georgia. And then there is Ryan Alexander Duke, from a modest family with lower income and no political ties. 
If the sons of several prominent families were involved in the cover-up of Tara's murder, could that be the reason that Ryan Duke is the only one behind bars? I'm checking in with Philip Holloway again. Phil is a criminal defense attorney with a long history of working within the Georgia legal system. I want to get his perspective. Are people still keeping secrets? Absolutely, yeah. I think the fact that the Hudson family had some um, degree of political clout may have uh, at some point influenced this investigation, but I do suspect that the fact that the family had political connections statewide played some role at some point in this investigation. As much as we've learned about this case, it still seems to be such a big mystery to everybody. Is there still a lot to learn here? There's a lot more out there that they haven't released, they've refused to release it, they apparently will not release it, and we will not see it until there's a trial. Brooke told me that after Ryan and Bo burned Tara's body, Bo stayed out in the pecan orchard for two weeks. My opinion is that Bo and Ryan, especially Bo, the leader, chose to have her destroyed and buried back on his uncle's farm so he could keep an eye on what's going on. See, if you bury her out in the woods a long ways from there or put her in water or something like that, you'd have to go every week for a long time to monitor her body, see what's going on. But over there, he can always keep an eye on it. And I think that's one reason they chose that area. Is Maurice right? Did Ryan and Bo burn Tara's body to destroy evidence that would connect them and possibly others to her murder? And did Bo Dukes choose the pecan orchard so he could keep an eye on Tara's remains? Zach Gerard has been in regular contact with Ryan since his arrest, and he has some new information he wants to share. Bo Dukes is a parasite. Apparently. Do you believe Ryan? I don't think he's lying. Because Ryan wasn't a bad looking guy, you know. He was an attractive young man. And Tara, she kind of had a thing for students or former students or younger guys, so I mean, it makes sense, you know. I believe he knows enough or remembers enough about that night to at one point think he actually done it. Kind of like, you know, just blurry visions here and there. But I don't think he truly believed he did it, but I think he just kind of went along with it because this is what Bozen told him, you know, so many times after over all these years or whatnot. But I don't necessarily think he's lying to me about their relationship. No. What do you think he was so afraid of? Well, he said that he was scared that Bo would do what he is doing now to him. In other words, just more or less flip the script in the story. So you put Bo in Ryan's shoes, and then I guess you would probably put Ryan in Bo's shoes. I mean, you would think that it wouldn't be in Ryan's best interest to make up a story about being in a relationship with Tara if yeah, it wasn't true. I wouldn't think he would lie to say that. Either way, he seems confident that there's others involved. Oh, yes. He, I mean, if you're believing Ryan, then you could say that he does seem genuinely confused about this and doesn't know what happened, but says, hey, Bo should be in here, not me. That's correct. That's what he says. But do you think Ryan knows the truth? I don't think he does. I really, honestly, I really don't. You think Bo does? I, yeah, oh yeah. Do you think he'll ever tell the truth? Ryan Duke claims that he was having a romantic relationship with Tara. This matches up with a lot of the speculation regarding Tara and her former students. Is it possible Tara met up with Ryan and Bo at the White Horse Saloon, like Zach told me? 
Is it possible that Bo Dukes was jealous that Ryan was having an affair with Tara? If he's telling the truth, and Bo is the actual killer, what does that mean for Ryan? I talked to Ashley Merchant. There was some news she wanted to tell me. I think it's going to be something big. Two different sources have stated that Ryan Duke was on morphine during his confession. And there may have been other former students involved in the cover-up of Tara's murder. Echoing what Zach told me, Ryan Duke's mom told me that there was more people there. She named names of other guys who were there the night Tara died. I talked to Zach and Karen separately. And to my knowledge, they have not talked together to cooperate something. So in my eyes, this is two separate sources telling me essentially the same thing. It seems like if there are more people involved, there's Bo, there's Ryan, and there's several other people involved, they've all been in the shadows this entire time, except for Bo and Ryan. So it's really like Ryan's the fall guy who may have participated in some way, but he's taking the heat for all of it. It does bother me, though. If Ryan didn't do anything, why isn't he just saying that? Why isn't he yelling from the rooftops, I didn't kill Tara? I mean, he is pleading not guilty, he's, but he's he has limited resources, especially in comparison to Bo. That could be part of it. He's, his story might just be overshadowed. With authorities, too. Whoever gets to the police first, I mean, that's right. That's who's going to get the deal, who's going to flip on the other person. You know, I had someone on his side who could help navigate that process for him, and Ryan was kind of just left there to be blamed. Everyone else maintained their, you know, position in the shadows, but it looks like now they have to come out. I talked to Ashley Merchant. She was being vague, but she kind of signaled to me that there was some news she wanted to tell me. I think it's going to be something big. So I've gotten some calls from Ryan's mother, from some other family members, his brother. He's got some friends that care very deeply about him. And they painted a picture of Ryan and just the desperation that he feels at this point. And it just spoke to me. You could imagine the weight on your shoulders when you have an innocent person's life in your hands and been talking to him about whether or not we can take his case on and we can take over his defense. Really? We really believe in his innocence and we really think he should get the best defense that he can. What in your mind convinced you the most that Ryan didn't kill Tara? I think that he has been outmaneuvered by someone who is conniving and smarter and maybe knows the game and played the game a little bit better. I think there's two individuals that were involved and I think one of those individuals planned this out and sort of laid seeds as the case went on and did that developing their own defense. Does it ever enter your mind that maybe he did it? In this case, the evidence at this point, it just doesn't make sense that he's the one that did it. Will we ever know what really happened to Tara? You may not be able to guarantee that the entire truth is going to come out. We just don't have the control over that. And so there's no way to say that everybody's going to know exactly what happened. I can tell you, I think people will know a lot more than they have historically because of the gag order and things like that um, once everything becomes public. But will everybody know exactly what happened? I don't think so. Tara Grinstead had built a life for herself. She had a successful career, plans to pursue a PhD, and family and friends who loved her. She was just a good person, you know? I was very lucky to have her. She's missed so much. I miss her voice and just the enthusiasm and the love that she had for kids. You know, we were kindred spirits, and I miss that a lot. With a trial date still pending, so many questions remain. Who actually killed Tara Grinstead? Ryan or Bo? According to his close friends and family, Ryan Duke did not have a violent personality, nor criminal history. How can we trust Ryan's confession if he was under the influence of morphine? I don't think there was a burglary. So then, what was his motivation to kill Tara? Is it possible that Bo killed Tara and dragged Ryan into it to be the fall guy? And what about the others who are allegedly involved? Are they going to get away with keeping this secret for 12 years? Although Bo Dukes is being charged with concealing and disposing of Tara's body, we believe that he is guilty of more than he's admitting. Would Bo Dukes really hide this secret for over a decade out of loyalty to his friend Ryan Duke? We believe that although Ryan is not an innocent party in Tara's murder, 
he may not be guilty of the crime with which he's charged. But that's to be decided in court. Tara's story has shown us that monsters can be anywhere, even in small communities, even in the place you call home. And now, my team and I are dedicating ourselves to bringing exposure to other missing persons cases. This is Up and Vanished. For more information on Up and Vanished, go to Oxygen.com. <laughs>